The newest film in the Alien franchise, Alien Romulus, is set to come out on August 16th. That's just around the corner. And so I decided why not do a themed week of videos here on my channel? It's something I've never done before. So I'm gonna do a themed week. Every video this week is gonna be about the Alien franchise, which is my favorite film franchise of all time. So stick with me as I put out a couple videos detailing different aspects of the Alien universe. And here today, we're starting with the original Alien, which I've covered in a previous video here. But we're gonna talk about that movie again really quickly, and that's gonna kick off my Alien Week on YouTube. So stay tuned. <laughs> So yeah, the original 1979 classic, Alien, from Ridley Scott. I've talked about this film before on my channel because I went to go see the re-release of Alien in the theater earlier this year in preparation for Alien Romulus. They were doing a co-promotion with that. And so I've already talked about seeing it in a theater here earlier on my channel. Now, much like the sequel and all the films really in this franchise, I've seen the original Alien movie dozens of times, maybe even hundreds of times over my life. Uh, like I've said before in previous videos, the Alien franchise is my favorite film franchise of all time. And so I've watched all the movies repeatedly, especially when I was younger. And I don't really wanna go into plot details and all that sort of stuff, same like in my other video about the re-release. All these Alien films have been out for years and years, you know, in decades in some cases. It's so flooded in popular culture, people kind of know what the story is about. I really wanna talk about just my experiences in the home theater with these films. The whole reason why I picked this set up, because I never owned this set when I was younger. I actually used to own the special edition two disc DVD sets of all four of the original films that I talked about in some of my other videos, which is where they kind of sourced material and stuff to make the Blu-ray release that I currently own. But the reason I picked these up years later, because uh, I have this and I have the other three movies following this, was basically off of the back of the Andy Summers THX home theater channel. Andy on that channel was talking about the special edition THX certified AC3 Laserdisc edition that he owns. And that uses the six track magnetic uh, audio mix that was from the 70 millimeter like blow ups. And he was talking about the other home media releases from like DVD and Blu-ray and everything that this 20th anniversary edition is kind of the closest in line to what that film looked like originally when it was released. And so it piqued my interest. And even though I own the Blu-ray set, you can find this version, either the single disc or the DVD set that has all four of the films for dirt cheap online. So I went online a few years ago and bought the entire four disc set for like $5 shipped on eBay. And so that's why I picked it up. I tend to actually like watching the DVD of this over the Blu-ray. And I understand the Blu-ray is gonna have higher quality in terms of like the picture and sound because the encoding, the bit rates and the file sizes is all bigger, it's ex expanded. You can have more information and it's upscaled better, you know. So I get that. And, and there is a certain level of like clarity and stuff on the Blu-ray that I do enjoy. But I do like watching the DVD release because to me, I've realized over doing this channel and just over the years, I really seek to find the nostalgia of seeing a lot of these movies and seeing stuff the way I did when I was younger at the movie theater and in the home, like, you know, viewing environment. And so while I appreciate having the cleanest, most high quality versions of a lot of films, I also like to have stuff that really represents what it may have looked like at the time. So no color corrections, you know, trying to keep all the little bits of grain and bits of imperfections in the actual picture in all this sort of stuff. 
really has a charm to it. And I mentioned that in my super bit video. And so that's a big reason why I enjoy having this version on this DVD release is because this one was done before they went in and kind of toyed with things. And, you know, alien to me doesn't suffer from a lot of the adjustments that some of the later films uh, suffered in terms of like future releases where they went in and did all kinds of like random upscaling and like DNR reduction and you know artifacting and like changing color palettes and changing surround sound mixes and all this stuff and alien while it's not as bad as that still has had some of that later on and so i really enjoy having this version for that type of picture quality and kind of experiencing it as closely in my mind to what an original release would have been like back in 1979 or 1980 when you would have watched this at the theater. So also talking about the audio quality on this disc, obviously the bit rates and the lossless audio is not gonna be there like what it is on a Blu-ray or a 4K disc. So it's gonna be lossy, it's just a Dolby encoded surround sound mix. But there's two options on this disc here. And not only does it have a 5.1 discrete like channel audio mix that I think was retooled for the home theater environment when this DVD came out. Uh, there is some speculation that it might be based on the original six track magnetic. I know the Blu-ray version does have an updated version of that six track magnetic uh, audio track that is nice to listen to. So the 5.1 on this disc here may be sourced from that, but it is a little bit different. But what I do enjoy is this one does have a 2.0 Dolby surround mix, which would have essentially been what you would have heard if you went to a 35 millimeter uh, release of this. So it's a 2.0 Dolby surround mix that you can use Dolby Pro Logic and the surround stuff is already encoded in there. So you can get a matrixed surround sound from this DVD that would, like I said, be pretty similar to what you would have seen in a 35 millimeter release back in 1979 or 1980. So even though it's not discreet, I enjoy listening to that mix on here because again, you add in the picture quality that looks a little more rough around the edges, more like an actual film release of the time. And then you put in the audio quality that would have been based on a matrix 2.0 Dolby surround mix like what you would have seen in the theater or as I should say should have heard in the theater at that time it really creates a more vintage nostalgic kind of atmosphere when you watch the film in that sort of environment and in that quality and kind of to wrap up this little video about why I own this DVD release and everything uh, like I said, it's mainly because I enjoy having that more nostalgic feel to stuff. As I said earlier in the video, I've come to realize I really like to strive to find that balance of high quality picture and audio and stuff here in my home theater, uh, especially for like more modern films. But with some of these older titles, you know, catalog titles from the 70s, 80s, even the 90s, I enjoy having a nostalgic feel when I watch stuff. And yes, the picture quality isn't perfect. There's imperfections and the audio isn't the highest quality. It's not lossless, it's not discreet. You know, it's not in the highest quality possible, but that stuff's okay to me because for films like this and the other films in the Alien franchise I'll get to in future videos, it's just, it's fun and there is some charm to watching these films in that kind of environment and in that kind of state, you know, that doesn't look overly processed and like pristine and crystal clear. And while it was really cool, it was awesome and one of the coolest experiences to see this film back in a major theater chain, you know, with an upscaled 4K restoration, like that's cool and that's, that's neat to see. But it's also fun to watch it in an environment and in a way that you probably would have seen it way back then when it was actual film stock and it had been, you know, run through all these projectors and all these cinemas and the sound had been like run through all this stuff. And so it's kind of gritty and kind of like dirty, you know, and that has some charm to me. And I, I do, you know, really enjoy that. So with that, I'm going to wrap this video up. 
Thank you for watching. Uh, as I always say, I really appreciate all the support. This was the first video in my alien week of videos. Uh, be on the lookout. I've got a few more videos coming up. I'm gonna talk about some of the other films. I'm gonna do a ranking video where I rank all the films in the alien franchise. And then I'm gonna talk about my predictions or some stuff that I'm hoping is gonna happen in the new Alien Romulus movie before I go and see it. And then I'm gonna do a review uh, kind of a quick reaction review of Alien Romulus when I go see it. I'm really hoping I can see it this weekend on opening weekend. It really depends on my work schedule. Uh, and I may also have a special video about the Alamo Draft House because there is one in St. Louis at the Foundry. And my wife and I are really hoping we could go there to see Alien Romulus. It's a special uh, movie occasion for me. And the Alamo Draft House, I've never been there, but it has really high reviews and the audio and picture quality is supposed to be really good. And Alien Romulus is gonna play in their big show screen. So that's in the most premium auditorium that they have. So if that happens, if I get to go and see it there, I'm gonna also do a dedicated video about my experience at the Alamo Draft House in St. Louis. Uh, but anyways, that's enough here today. Uh, stay tuned for more Alien content this week on the first ever Alien Week on my channel. So thank you, I'll see you in the next video.